Rob J gave me an incredibly generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon and brings you today's video. Merin of Clan Nel Toth versus Estrid with no lands in hand is an easy mulligan. Okay, gets us into just one of our colours. Maybe Grim Harry Specs will be able to help us with that. Yeah, Life from the Loam with Mesmeric Orb should help as well. Get rid of the Living Death. Yeah, if we mill a bunch with the Mesmeric Orb over the course of the game and then Life from the Loam sees a bunch of lands, we'll be able to fix our colours. We just need to get into a green off the top quite desperately. There's every chance that we see Yavimaya from Estrid though. Already ramping with a Noble Hierarch. Okay, and there is a Victimize we will be able to cast as long as we hold on to the Mana Crypt. So, uh, play out the Mesmeric Orb. And a Swamp, might as well tap down the Swamp so that we mill more. Because whenever we untap a permanent, whenever any player untaps a permanent, they mill that many. Take a forest away from our opponent as well. And there is an Omen of the Sea during the main phase. Might suggest our opponent's eager for our land, if he's not using the flash on that. And that is a Gemstone Caverns, just tapping for a colourless. So we mill two and potentially take a Lightning Bolt from the Mana Crypt. End up milling a Strip Mine and a Solemn Simulacrum, so could have played the Solemn. If we get into the Strip Mine first... <laughs> Would rather have milled the Razakath. Well, we can do stuff at least. The Cabal Coffers and Grim Haru Specs could be sacrificed to the Victimized to get the Solemn out, so we'll set ourselves up with that. And milled this time is Hall of Heliod's Generosity, so we won't be able to make use of that to fish things out of the bin. Scrying again with Omen of the Sea, so I think he is struggling on lands over there. Not managing to get into a third one by turn three. And there we see a Bloodstained Mire and a National's Altar, so we've got lands to get with the Life from the Loam at least. A Reclamation Sage, not much use to us, so... Oh, we have to have two legal targets with this, unfortunately, so... Yeah, once again we are relying on milling into at least one creature and keeping hold of this. And keeping hold of the Mana Crypt, so... It'll swing in for three. And then let's activate the Cabal Coffers for a single black mana so that we can untap more stuff next turn. See if we continue to take lands off the top for our opponent. Well, that's two lands and a Khan Liberated, so... May well still get into a land, I'm sure he's got plenty in the deck. He obviously would have kept these on top with the Scry, I imagine, just in case he can manage to get into Mesmeric Orb or we lose it somehow. And Enchantress's presence, so we're both missing lands at least. We want to see a creature on the Mesmeric Orb and couldn't ask for a much better one than Sakura Tribe Elder in a Meren deck. And there's a Sol Ring as well, just to add insult to injury on our opponent. So swing in for three before we sacrifice the Grim Harry Specs. And then might as well get out the Sol Ring with the two colourless mana from the Mana Crypt. Run the mana through the Cabal Coffers again. And then uh, there's a Sack Outlet which is tempting, but we'll go for Solemn Simulacrum and the Sakura Tribe Elder. And then sacrifice Grim Harry Specs in order to do this. Some Simulacrum enters and finally fixes our green mana. Alright, hitting just the one land that time. As well as a search for Azkanta. And an abundant growth. Okay, looks as though again our opponent's not hitting the lands. He's really unlucky here. A Sanctum Weaver could draw him into one because of the Enchantress's presence. But apparently not, so going through to the end step. Sakura Tribe Elder can make us another green mana. So we untap a hell of a lot and Mesmeric Orb we need to be careful of. We've still got 79 cards left in the deck, but we do need to make sure that we don't completely mill ourselves. Going down to 34. Alright, and there is a Sack Outlet in Yorgmoth, which is what we need. So let's go for Merin first of all. And we do get to make use of the Sol Ring Mana, so go for Reclamation Sage. I'll go after their Enchantress's presence. And then we'll swing in to their Zero Power with the Solemn Simulacrum. And with the Merin, we can grab something back here. Oh, we've already got a Sack Outlet now, so let's go for the Sakura Tribe Elder. And that'll bring it back to hand because we don't have any XP counters. They do have four mana available now because we left them with the Sanctum Weaver. Alright, so that is a Fantatog. You can sack an enchantment or discard a card, so that's a pretty damn good card. Never seen that one before. That'll enable some stuff. Now, we are shy on black mana here for that herb org, so maybe it's worth starting to go for the um, the life from the loam, finally. Don't think we've seen herb org yet. 
All right, drawing a card takes us into Command Tower anyway, so I don't necessarily need to do it quite yet. But I would like to see the back of that thing. So let's drop ourselves a Yorg Moth. Put a minus counter on the Thanatog by sacrificing the Solemn. This will draw us a card as well as give us an experience counter for Merin. And going for plus one plus one in response, uh, that is with discarding a card. I mean, not against them discarding cards. So if we're not going to get rid of it with the Yorgmoth, maybe we just aim for this stuff instead. Try and get rid of their mana. There's an Altar of Dementia, another sack outlet. I mean, it's a minus one, minus one counter, so they can't discard things forever. Maybe we do just carry on after this. So sacrifice the Rex Sage this time. Could reanimate the Rex Sage to get rid of this. I think we're looking quite commanding at this point. All right, so another plus one, making them discard. Uh, they get rid of Archetype of Imagination and the Destiny Spinner, but that now has two minus counters sat on it, so as soon as the turn passes, that'll die. Got an Assassin's Trophy as well. Um, let's get out the Sakura Tribe Elder, and we'll just sacrifice that straight away to make some more mana, and that'll give us the three experience counters we need to get the Reclamation Sage. And then with the Floating Mana and Green, we can go Life from the Loam. Uh, let's just make it Tainted Wood. Uh, won't bother with the strip mine, it's a bit cutthroat. Just get a swamp and a fetch. And then if we swing in, they could discard some more cards to take out the Merin, which wouldn't be the best, I don't think, but we won't tempt them anyway, so we don't have to replay the Merin later. So at the end of the turn, the Reclamation Sage will come back into play, thanks to Merin, showing us three experience counters. And that gets rid of their Mana Dork in the Sanctum Weaver. And then we can even, yeah, they sacrifice that thing. Um, we can even go after their Dork to completely insult them here. Sacrifice the Reclamation Sage again. Gets rid of the Noble Hierarch with the Yorg Moth. And we'll take the Life from the Loan back to Mill 3 with the draw to the uh, to the Yorg Moth there. Okay, so Thanatog continuing to sacrifice and discard stuff, but you know, with hardly any mana, I don't see that it's going to be relevant. We've... Just managed to squeak past our opponent now, thanks to being able to reanimate stuff. So maybe... So it might be our opponent was planning on setting up the Starfield of Nyx here. Yeah, maybe that was the aim, so he could load up his graveyard and then slowly reanimate things. Um, yeah, we'll just discard life from the loam to hand size again. And our opponent decides to scoop there, which is fair enough. Ha, <laughs> yeah. So was looking to load up his bin and then go for replenish, so... I think my opponent was... Yeah, he was a bit annoyed with me for killing the mana generators, but if we didn't, then look what would have happened. So I was feeling pretty cutthroat there, and it was, but the alternative was potentially we go down to all those enchantments. Merrin up against another combo-centric deck here at Shurikai this time, and again we start with a one-lander. <laughs> and again, getting two Cabal Coffers on turn one. I was debating whether or not to have that in the deck, but we do have crop rotation, so... Yeah, I fancied my odds of it not being too much of a pain. Now let's keep here. Can just put the Cabal Coffers back, I suppose. So we'll go for a tap land with the Misty Rainforest. Just a tap land to start our opponent off. We get into the third source of mana. We want to be able to cast that Cultivate, so... Yeah, let's just grab a Bayou. And then holding up double blue, so... Not sure they're going to want to counter a Cultivate, but we'll test them here. They are holding up priority. And we've got a forest in hand, so let's go for a couple of swamps, just in case we do get into that Cabal Coffers later. And during the main phase, we see a Brainstorm from our opponent. And again, holding up double blue. Okay, Nature's Law. Uh, that means we can go forest into Nature's Law, into Solemn Simulacrum should be fine. Gives us a good uh, piece of sack fodder for the Sadisi. So we'll get another basic forest. And we'll have five swamps available to us now, so if we do get into that Cabal Coffers, like I said, it should be fairly decent at this point. Fixing their white mana a bit better with the Marsh Flats, followed by a Mana Vault, and our opponent straight into a Shurikai. Alright, there's an Ancient Tomb, so I'll drop that because I don't want to do the maths on what I'm about to do here. Uh, so we go Sidisi into Rexage. So I didn't have to do the Ancient Tomb thing. Um, could get Canker Bloom or something like that. Something that can sacrifice itself would probably be better. So yeah, go for Sidisi. 
Could have undone the uh, tapping of the manor there, I suppose, if I cared. Might draw in something relevant off the solemn. And obviously we'd like to do all this with Merrin in place so that we're getting experience counters, but I um, I don't want to be playing into counter magic and I'm hoping my opponent doesn't have any held up for just one mana. Draw from the Solemn first. Okay, there's a Rex Sage, so that could dictate what we go for here. Maybe we could go for Jeweled Lotus and then get the Rex Sage down for the Shurikai anyway. And then if they've got an offer you can't refuse or something like that, then, I mean, we can still go for the Reclamation Sage. So, yeah, it turns out the Ancient Two Mana might be relevant after all. So we'll tutor for a Jeweled Lotus and cast the Jeweled Lotus. Then tap that down for Black Mana for our Commander and get Merrin into play. And they allow it, so just have to hope that we don't see a Force Spike or anything here. Managed to get our commander into play, so hopefully blow up their commander. Alright, awesome. And then the Merin will bring us back our Solemn Simulacrum next turn. Hopefully we've slowed them down quite considerably there. They decide against untapping the Mana Vault. Go for a Ponder instead. Look at the top three and draw. Just holding up four mana. Managed to get down another land there. There is a Gaia's Cradle. So we're not struggling on the mana front. Let's get that down. It's a good target for any strip mine effects they might have. And we can just make it a solemn simulacrum here. Missing a sack outlet, really. Get another swamp down. So we've got three, four, five of those. Six if we play that next turn. So we just start turning in sideways here, really. Yeah, we've got stuff going, but we have slowed down a bit. Okay, there's the Wandering Emperor. Nothing we could have done about that anyway. And they can exile, and this is why we want a sack outlet. Sadisi so Undead Vizier, so can't abuse the tutors on that. And then the pilot token gets thrown in the way of Merin. Don't really have to worry about commander damage, but yeah, I think they would have made more use out of keeping a pilot token there. Alright, so do these have double strike? No, vigilance, two twos with vigilance, so... Hmm, I'm wondering if we can actually make use of this victimize or not. Difficult against a white player who's going to be dealing with exile. And we're giving our opponent too much time with a full grip. So have to play it out and see what happens. All right, a day of judgment means... Hmm. We'll have victimized targets at least. Yeah, I think we do put Merrin in the command zone still. We will get some experience counters as well. Also draw a card to the Solemn Simulacrum. And that's just a cavern of souls, although I don't... If we're going to see any land, I don't mind seeing this against an Azorius control player. And then plussing with the Wandering Emperor. Okay, Song of the Dryads onto their commander should be quite nice. We'll go Cavern of Souls. And name it... Hmm. Don't know if we've got more humans than we do Shaman. Yeah, I think I'll just name Human. And we could always go for a Victimize onto Merin to get these things back. Um, I think we're fine to just leave it there though. <laughs> Alright, there's a Swords to Plowshares onto the Merin, so... Uh, they, uh, yeah, choose to target, sacrifice a creature, so the sacrificing of a creature isn't part of the cost, so they could have done the swords in response to that anyway. Uh, yes, we put it in the command zone again. We're making them use their interaction at least. Not letting us go through to the end step, because we would have been able to grab back probably the Rex Age there. Again, not untapping the vault, and making a Vigilance token this time. And then it is a Merchant Scroll in order to search up an instant. And with that, they search out Memory Deluge. So, can't cast that during this turn. Alright, a Delighted Halfling is probably going to be good sack fodder. Could probably use it this turn. We've got Cavern of Souls, so... Yeah, drop this Swamp finally. And then cast the Delighted Halfling once Merin hits play. They are holding on to priority, but passing reasonably quickly. Um, yeah, we'll just go for the Guy's Cradle tap now. Victimize targets the two creatures in the bin. See if they've got some counter magic for us. Apparently not, so allowing it, the delighted halfling gets sacrificed, which means Merin gets us another counter. So we've got enough to consistently reanimate the reclamation sage. And um, obviously we need a sack outlet for that, unfortunately, but get rid of the mana vault before they can make further use of it. And Solemn Simulacrum going to grab us our last swamp should be fine. And we'll be able to dig out the Delighted Halfling again immediately. Alright, it's a second tutor, a mystical tutor this time. And grabbing themselves a tithe. So they're struggling on mana apparently. 
Plus counter goes on the Vigilance token, now giving it first strike and it's a 3-3. Tithe allows them to go for some planes, which means they should be able to hold up the Memory Deluge as well. Alright, so we should be able to go wide on the Planeswalker here at least. Five cards left in hand, we assume they're just holding up the Deluge. Uh, no land please, alright, Junji is a good creature but we don't have the self mill going either. Let's just turn everything in sideways at the walker and see what happens. They probably just leave the samurai alone. Might as well keep it in play I suppose. Not worthy that the delighted halfling, we could have held back because it would have made the Junji uncounterable. Anyway, the reclamation sage dies. Nothing to blow up with that. Might as well play the dragon here though because when it dies we'll be able to have our opponent at least discard some cards. So when the Rex Age comes down now we'll probably just point it at the Solemn Simulacrum in order to get another experience counter as well as um, drawing ourselves a card here. So blow up the Solemn Simulacrum and see what we draw into here. Okay that gets us into more card draw in the form of Read the Bones. And there is the Memory Deluge that we assumed our opponent was going to play. <laughs> Tutor Number three, got a fair number of tutor effects in this deck as well because it seems to be the way that you play 1v1 is just um, try and really craft your hand as best you can. Ah, okay, there's a humility. Um, we can get rid of that with Song of the Dryad, so yeah, hopefully that lands because that turns all our creatures into vanillas. Our opponent hasn't necessarily shown signs of counter magic yet though, so yeah, I'm not sure... Now we'll go for Read the Bones first either way. Scry 2, draw 2, lose 2. And there is an Assassin's Trophy. We'll keep both of those and Animate Dead as well. Um, actually, do we need Animate Dead? I'd rather get closer to a sack outlet now I think about it, so... Assassin's Trophy on top. Alright, gets us into Command Tower. We'll just throw that out. And then, uh, yeah, let's go for the Assassin's Trophy on the Humility now. They are holding up priority, so... We can get them to use counter magic here, it's good. An offer you can't refuse. Might still have a Dovin's Veto or something like that, but I think we have to try the enchantment now. Yep, and he's got counter magic for that, so <laughs> that's a mana drain. Yeah, just have to play the Midnight Reaper and hope that we can find a means of getting rid of humility, but that might just be us done. Can happen sometimes with Merin, I found, is that um, the hand can get quite empty because you work out of the bin. And um, it just means that if you don't get the right things that you need, like sack outlets and a full graveyard, then, like I said, you just give your opponent way too much time. They can make use of that mana vault or a mana drain mana to uh, recast the Shurikai. Uh, that is a board wipe, so Merin doesn't see any more experience counters because it didn't have any abilities. So it looks as though our opponent just completely switches off our deck, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, that just rubs salt in the wound, doesn't it? A high market gets us the sack outlet that we needed a long time ago. So, might as well just play out the Merin. A land tax now to get some more lands out. I think we've definitely got more lands than our opponent. And then on thin ice, we'll be able to get rid of the Merin once again. Our opponent's down to one card at least. So, I'll put it back in the command zone because I doubt we're going to be able to do anything else next turn anyway. Yep, just another forest for us, so might as well play the high market and Merin again. And then Shurikai gets to draw two and discard, making a pilot token. So the card advantage is definitely on our opponent's side. So I think pretty much the only thing we have here is uh, Beast Within, because we're very creature based. So Humility kind of kills us here. Um, yeah, we could get a tutor into Beast Within maybe, but the chances of us doing anything from this point aren't great. Um, I mean, I'll play it out for another few turns, but I don't see what we're going to do here. No point playing out the Farhaven Elf. Land tax triggering for our opponent, he can get some basics. And then we see a Moon Silver Key. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how our opponent got all those cards in hand actually. Anyway, our opponent's looked at our hand with... The Gitaxian Probe now getting down a Jace the Mind Sculptor, so going to Brainstorm. Moon Silver Key must have been sacrificed for the uh, Thought Vessel there. So don't have to discard down to hand size. A Playcrafter, again, it's switched off, so could have had them sacrifice the Jace there, but it just comes down as a 1-1. One, one. 
So like I said, I'll just play it out for another couple of turns, but I don't see that we're doing much of anything here. Our opponent's probably got into more counter magic at this point. And then Fate sealing us with Jace the Mind Sculptor. And going for the loot with Shurikai. Skull Clamp has entered and goes on the pilot token. And they pass the turn at that with 12 cards in hand. Rune Scar Demon's useless. Maybe just play out some creatures here so that we can keep swinging in at Jace. Maybe should have done that over the past couple of turns. And huh, there's a Cyclonic Rift from our opponent. So just bouncing the creatures back really. I mean, we're hardly doing anything with them anyway. And cycling, a miscalculation, which suggests that he does have other counter spells in his hand. Fate sealing goes again. I'll take one more draw during the draw phase, but this is one of those decks that is going to take forever and a day to actually win, so I don't think there's anything that's really too incredible that our opponent's going to show us with this Shurikai list. It's a pretty typical Azorius control build that takes a long time to win, so yeah, I think we're fine to scoop it up over the next turn. Uh, skull Clamp onto the Pilot Token after the uh, loot. Mox Diamond. And yeah, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. So we're getting into decent draws, just can't do anything against the Humility because our opponent had the Counter Magic for the two cards that we had to try and get rid of it. So we'll unfortunately have to leave it there. I uh, will say good game to my opponent and just call it a day there, I think. Hopefully you all enjoyed this revisit to Merin. And if you want to see more from these older commanders, then let me know. But they don't tend to do well in the views. So just treading water until Eldraine, I think, where people will be much more interested in the new shiny set. But if you do want to see more from these older commanders, then be sure to share them with your friends and the like and help get these view counts and likes up. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.